Hello everyone, and welcome to another fine episode of Who's That Anime with your host Stephen Colin. We're further jumping further down the hole of spectacular month of October. It is currently the 23rd of October, which mm -hmm. is accurate for this recording for the podcast. The degree? Well, it, it is the, a recording that we're doing now to be put live tonight. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is the uh, recording for tonight. Uh, and we're doing Vampire Hunter D. Yes. 1985 is Vampire Hunter D. Yeah, the old school stuff. Were you uh, aware of this movie prior to uh, prior yeah. to my saying, hey, we should do it? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of Vampire Hunter D. It's like a, a kind of famous one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never watched I, it uh, I uh, own a copy of this. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it will be probably the first DVD print of this in the UK. All right. Um, one one thing that's worth note, actually, is that the version we watched, which we uh, managed to find on YouTube, mm -hmm. is the re-release which is the the voice cast the 2015 voice cast so they redid all the voices all oh, right so it makes more sense maybe um no, no. i don't know <laughs> I, I don't i don't i don't remember well to be fair uh this version didn't make much sense and the one i remember uh never never really made much sense it's, um it's all over the yeah. place to be honest it, 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 it is it mm. is um it is a a weird and kind of pretty looking thing from back in the day like it's definitely like obviously there's a load of um manga for this yeah so, there is there's like I think 52 volumes or something i looked up yeah um, so it's, uh, it's still it was no going joke. it's still going oh my god yeah yeah he's they're releasing it every so often Anyway, I'm um, talking about the manga. Ah, uh -huh. it's a twenty-six volumes of that manga is available on Humble Bundle. That's for... right. You sent me that. I meant to. I meant to get that. You got. You got ten days to get it, Steve. T ten days, and ten so days. do you, the listener, potentially. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. I. I've never read any of it. Uh, my oh. experience of Vampire Entity is purely. The two movies and a little bit of playing the PS One game. Oh, I played the you played the PS One game a bit. It, yeah, not yeah. a lot of it, but some of it. Um, it's a game. Fine. It, yeah, it's fine. I guess <laughs> like fairly standard PlayStation era character action game. So, um, right. but yeah, it's, it's it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, you're right. Vampire Hunter D has has ten days remaining. And it seems to be 29 volumes. Holy shit. Was it 29? I thought it was 26 there. Damn. No, 29 volumes. That ain't bad, actually. That Actually, that's really good. <laughs> that's actually probably one of the better big deals on Humble Bundle, because usually they're all over the place. But this is actually yeah, consecutive that's... volumes, I believe. Pay, and it's, right, here's the thing. It's £13.88 for 29 volumes. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, that's super good. I the other I suppose that's the thing as well is like I, I uh, typically would then go oh maybe I should buy the books and then I will buy the books but I have no room for more books. Uh, oh. I'm already running. I, I like fortunately only have maybe four more volumes of Gantz to get. So, well, you just bought new shelves like the other day or not? Yeah, I, I don't buy I don't... is by the right term. Well, I, I mean, Gained. technically, yes. I, I, if you if you use it in the tradition uh, traditional sense of exchanging something money for goods or services, uh, I guess we technically did. But it was sort of more of a crisscross style, paid paid for paid for shells. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I, I'll kill your husband if you kill my wife. Sort of uh, thing, so that no one knows. Uh, it was that Wait. we we we. That wasn't the deal I remembered. No, no, the deal. No. The deal was is that, uh, or originally thought is, uh, uh, Colin just... very, very kindly offered uh, or uh, helped me out and and taking some, going a bit of distance to pick up some new shelving units, hmm. and uh, 
I offered to pay for them, as is what I thought the deal was, and the guy was like, no, it's fine. And I was like, uh... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> What's happened? Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it turns out uh, he'd already arranged uh, that I didn't... I was not aware of this, that uh, a donation to charity of the value that we would have paid was what he would be fine with. And it was like, okay, well, we'll do that. So, uh, uh, yeah. I, I, as requested... Uh, money was was uh, donated uh, to charity uh, to to Mitt Millens actually, so it's, that's all done. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Very cool. Uh, going back on the charity idea and talking about the manga of Vampire Hunter D. If you don't know, Humble Bundle uh, is essentially about kind of like charity funds where you buy stuff and I think a percentage of the profit will go to charity. Yeah, um, it looks like the opportunity you can like have a custom amount here that's shared between um, Dark Horse Comics, who are the publisher of the the volumes, or there's a World Central Kitchen, which I assume is the charity uh, in this instance, uh -huh. and then there's an amount that goes to Humble Bundle. Humble Bundle have to receive a minimum of I think such an amount. It looks like six pounds is their minimum. All right. <clears throat> so. I'll pro and you can actually give gosh, you can give nothing to Dark Horse Comics if you don't want to. Yeah, they don't need it. <laughs> uh oh it looks sorry, okay, the minimum is based on percentage. Um so Okay. Yeah, I I'll probably pick those up. I um, mean it tells you the net worth a while there on the on the site. Yeah. <laughs> the uh where where is the, the bundle worth? It did actually say. I think it's oh, the bundle. Two, two hundred and three pounds value, and you can buy it all for thirteen. That's in the next really ten good. days, like yeah. literally from the twenty third of October, like I mentioned the date earlier, for until yeah. I don't know, fifth of November. I wonder. Mm. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. Will be fifth of November. It cost to buy the individual volumes. Online, actual books. Yeah, just just okay. out of curiosity, like well, that much. I'm sure. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, that's what uh, I'm sure that's what they base their their figures on the the re retail value I, I of the books. They, I think they've based it on the digital retail value of the books. Oh, okay. Why? Which is also, you know, that's fine. Like that's still good because it's <laughs> seven seven ninety nine in addition. Um. And it looks like there's only 30. 30? Is that how many there are? What? Yeah, sure. I'm sure, I looked up, when I looked at the Wikipedia, it was like at 52. I mean, it, it, is, it's, it could be likely that there are 52 in Japan. They just haven't been localized yet. Um, it hmm. seems here that the, the uh, 30th one uh, will be released next December. <laughs> Yeah, which is weird. Oh, sweet lord! Uh, th there's a variety of prices that you can pay for the physical editions of these. That you know, <laughs> uh, the very first one is uh, eleven pounds and sixteen pence, which is like that's that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, then you can't find the second one. Uh, oh. Then the third one is three ninety nine. What? Uh, yeah, What's and then the, the, fo the fo this is just Amazon listings. Um, oh, all right, okay. Then the uh, paperback for the fourth one is uh, fourteen pounds twenty four. Uh -huh. uh, then it gets a bit wild, <clears throat> where the uh, sixth one is forty three pounds fifty eight. Um, and then some of them aren't available, and then a lot of them aren't available. <laughs> and then volume fifteen is eighty five pounds. And then volume volume nineteen is two hundred and fifty pounds and ninety nine pence, including two pounds eighty delivery. What? Uh, you got, you got paid delivery? Yeah, for your two hundred and fifty pound ninety nine pounds purchase <laughs> of a book. Uh, here's one for four hundred and eighty one pounds and ninety nine pence, and again includes a two pound eighty delivery charge. All right. Uh, and and then the most expensive one that I can find was not the four hundred pound one. Uh, is volume twenty six, which is one thousand one hundred and fifty pounds and ninety nine pence. What? I, I don't know. And that's not even new. These aren't new. These are like used good condition. 
Ah, that's some bullshit. Man. Holy shit, that is crazy. Oh, they do have the omnibus books though. That I don't know. If that's what the things on them. Um... No, they're they're not the omnibus book. The omnibus books are like the smooshed down. We have so many of these versions. Mm. Um, yeah, actually, you know what? Hey, Colin, I'm probably going to buy the digital version. However, however, uh -huh. uh, since the omnibus versions are now like fairly regularly in print and not stupidly expensive, oh, I might like pick a up. Oh yeah, yeah. Like these are fourteen pounds each for an omnibus edition, and they're brand new. So and so you're buying the S. Uh, volume twenty six at uh, a grand. Is that what you're going to do? So, basically, uh, the <laughs> omnibus editions. The way it will work is you get three volumes per book. All right. Okay. Yeah. So rather than like you know thirty books, I'd have ten books by the time I was done. Mm -hmm. But it looks like they're only even releasing the third omnibus edition. Uh when is it? Next year? Yeah, February next year. <laughs> so. <laughs> Could be could be waiting a while, uh, yeah. before you able yeah, well. to to own all of those. Yeah, um, I do. Oh, shit, I need. Oh wait, Gantz mm -hmm. Volume Ten is available now. You motherfuckers! All right, <coughs> okay. I need to stop looking at. Stop it, uh, Amazon. I need to stop looking at Amazon. Um. <laughs> so, Vampire Hunter D. Um. Mm -hmm. We could we uh, uh, what. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So, one of my prevailing memories of watching this is like I I I got the train uh, to Glasgow uh -huh. myself to have a wander around, go into Forbidden Planet, look at their manga DVDs. Uh, it's about that time I was sort of very much just kind of embracing that this is the person I apparently am. So um, I think I picked up this, and I want to say Blackjack. Oh. Blackjack. On D yeah, on DVD. Oh, wow. um, so, so I grabbed those. Mm -hmm. And Vampire Hunter D was my favourite of the two. Um, my prevailing memory of Vampire Hunter D, though, was the the music after the intro. What intro? So there's, like, the title card that's, like, in the future when shit's happened and monsters and demons roam the land, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah thing and then it plays uh, a series of notes it goes da, na, 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 in that kind of yeah i think it did and and the thing about that is is i was like oh man uh what does that remind me of i was like you know what i guess it sounds a, a little bit like uh nightmare on elm street uh -huh. um the, the kind of music that they would have the creepy music on the the, the doorstep of uh of uh the the house from the first movie, I was like, maybe it is that. And I go back and listen, it's like, ah, you know what? It's close. I think it's using the same synth. It's definitely close, but it's not, it's not it. Uh -huh. And then I, I was just at a loss for ages uh, until a little while ago when uh, <laughs> I was watching TV and I see the uh, Dolph Lundgren, Frank Langella classic, uh, Masters of the Universe. Uh -oh. oh, God. Okay. And uh, I'm watching it, and it gets to the scene with the cosmic key. You know the one. I oh, am. Yeah. To yeah. a bit. I can't. I can't uh... That music, Remember. that cosmic key music, I think, is it's... inspired by Vampire Hunter D. I swear. You think? Like they're almost identical. <laughs> I mean, they're almost. I mean, like I mean the first. First Nightmare on, Elm, Nightmare on Elm Street, which I could also say you you could uh, you could probably suggest was um, maybe influential to it is nineteen eighty four, and uh -huh. this is nineteen eighty five, and then Masters of the Universe I think is nineteen eighty nine, nineteen eighty seven, so it's eighty four, eighty five, eighty seven, uh -huh. <laughs> and it seems like over such a short span of time, I almost struggle to believe that. Uh, it's either, I haven't checked this, either the same musician, uh, the same composer from Nightmare on Elm Street and Masters of the Universe who had had an influence for this, mm -hmm. or if there's something else going on. But, I, yeah. 
I, I had to I had to say that because it's really bothering me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were just going to say, oh, you know what it was? It's like the doorbell I used to have when I was a kid in the house. <laughs> No, no, not quite as simple as that, unfortunately. Oh. A far more convoluted and painful story than that. Um, <laughs> trying to see if I can find. I'm gonna just doing a bit of you know because fact checking never kills a podcast. I'm just having a look to see if they have kill this one. Uh, composer. It was already dead. Uh, composer. <laughs> Sorry, dead Jim. Do we have a know composer it. here? Composer. No. Oh, that's interesting. Just go watch the credits, dude. You got the oh, box. Oh, music by Bill Conte. Bill. Bill Conte. Bill Conte. So I don't. Okay, it doesn't appear that he did the music for Nightmare on Elm Street, which I didn't think so. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Well, Masters uh, of the Universe. He did. Bill Conte did Masters of the Universe. That's where I'm starting. Oh, you're going that way. Uh, okay. No, I'm going that way. And then Nightmare on Elm Street. There's, there's got to be a link here. There just has to be. Mm -hmm. uh, Charles Bernstein. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, the guy that did Kujo. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. There's something, uh, something interesting about it. Yeah. Something interesting, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, do you want to do you want to kick us off on on this movie? All right. That we're supposed to talk about, and it's now nearly twenty minutes into the podcast. Ah, nothing unusual there. Um, no. Yeah. So. I'm going to ruin your levels, but um, that's fine, right? Why, why are you ruining my levels? I kind of moved them back and now I get better volume. <laughs> oh, oh well. Yeah. No, that's cool. It's all back down. Right. Anyway, uh, so the movie starts in the dark, dark rainy night. Yep. Uh, and some lass is running through a field. Yeah, she's uh, on. Uh, she's on patrol. Yeah, yeah. We don't know that. She's running through a yeah. field at the moment. Ah, uh, fair enough. Yeah. And then uh, so there's, running through there's a field a... with a gun that's twice the size of her. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there's a guy. There's like a a beast starts eating something out of the tree, and she's like, "Oh no, this thing's eating this out of the tree. It's going to be bad. I'm going to go and and shoot it." So she goes and shoots it, and then she prods it a bit and goes, "Yeah, that's dead." And yep. then her her fearful steed Luke, <laughs> because the the names in this are just so bad. Yeah, Luke. Uh, it's like, oh, Luke, come here, because it, it ran away, so she had to get the steed to chase yep. after it before she killed it, and then it got bitten in the neck, but she didn't quite kill it. <laughs> she was she was complacent. We should mention that when she fires her, gun, it's one of these amazing guns that when she fires it, her skirt flies up. Um, I never yeah, noticed that, Steve. It's a, that's a, it's it's really difficult not to notice because essentially it's like it's like oh that's the button that one fires bullets and two shows your pants to everyone. No, I don't remember that. To also, honest, uh, her fringe just... like this is that this has been really bothering me. Her fringe uh -huh. changes consistently throughout the whole film. At the start of the film, it looks like she's basically got like a tomboy haircut, but massive pigtails. So she's like basically got a mullet, a braided mullet. And yeah. then, then later on in the film, she has like a longer fringe. It's like, it still looks like a mullet, though. <laughs> sure. I don't know what mullet is. It's, uh, you know, business up front, party behind. Yeah, I know that, yeah. I can't do what mullet is. Um, I may have had kind of mullet-esque hair before. In, not in the sense that it was sort of a proper mullet, it's just because I never caught it cut. And it grows nah. faster at the back rather than the front. I see. Anyway, uh, so. Yeah, she does that, kills the beast. Beast kind of takes out the horse. Then she gets attacked by a werewolf. Which. Yep. No, the werewolf attacks the horse. 
<laughs> she uh, she shoots she shoots the thing to death by blasting it from point blank range. Yeah. It's like, well, that's over now. Yeah, and then a werewolf starts eating eating the horse that's already struggling for life. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I guess this horse is dead. And then the horse is like da 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 the the werewolf's like kind of goes at her, lunches at her, but like just breaks her crucifix necklace around her neck. Yep. Uh, and she it breaks, and then all of a sudden, the big vampire dude kind of appears in the rock in big flashiness. All that, oh, I should warn people. I should warn people about this anime in the sense I believe it will give everyone epilepsy. Oh yeah, I mean if you it's, don't already have it, it's it's a very flashy anime. Mm, uh, that, is, that is for certain. It's certainly later after this because it's really flashing the way here. Had like weird kind of like parallax parallax scrolling on the on the grass. Yeah, I think I know the bit you're talking about with the flashing. I think it's the security camera scene with the mayor's son. Oh, maybe <laughs> yeah. For some reason, while he's looking at the camera, it's going blah 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 blah. Yeah. Why? Why is it? Why is it doing that? Or, <laughs> <laughs> or sure, it's maybe there's another fight where it's, um, I think D is fighting. Probably the the mutant person that wants to kill him. Oh, uh, 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 is it Ray, Ray. Y- yeah, Ray. Uh, yeah. yeah, we'll we'll get to Ray. But yeah, you're right. I think there's a lot of flash. And then it was like too. proper like <laughs> flash <laughs> photography. Warning: this this anime contains flash photography. Holy shit! Uh, anyway, so he he kind of appears and it's just a big shadow and like. <gasps> And then he kind of goes yep. his eyes red, and then kind of big shadow, and then more lightning kind of happens, and then a big flash of lightning that stays around far too long. Yep. As he comes down and bites her in the neck. Yep. I believe. Traditional vampire style. Yeah. Uh, though I would have to say the girl at this time had green hair, but I assume that's because she was in the dark. I think that is, yes. Because otherwise the bite makes her hair go blonde. I mean, maybe. Who knows? Uh, Who knows? And then, is it after this, the next scene, is it uh, the, this scene you see D walking in on a horse? And then yep. this blonde girl just running at him? Runs at him <laughs> and goes, Hey, you! You hunter! Why don't you say anything? <laughs> Are you just being rude? <laughs> yeah! Very much. It's like, there are maybe two reasons you wouldn't be talking to me now. One, because you're not really sure about what's going on, or two, because you're just rude. Yeah. And then she's like, oh, you know what? I bet it's that you're rude. I'm going to fucking attack you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, she I... pulls out her Simon Belmont whip and starts having a go at his face. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, no, that's not going to work. And then it kind of splits up into, like, four purple tentacles. Strangles him, grabs him by the, the limbs. Yeah. And she's like, ha, you're not the hunter I'm looking for. Pathetic. Yeah, give us and then your he sword. Just kind of, yeah, and he's just like, and then they just stop working. And he says, like, "Oh, uh, sorry, I guess. Like, maybe you are the guy. I, I, I need you <laughs> to help me out because uh, I got bitten by a vampire. Look, see these marks. I got yeah. bitten and shit. Uh, and I need some help. And then she's like, you know, um, if you help me out, I'll." I'll I'll make you three three meals a day, and also you can do whatever you want to me. Very it's much. Like, wow, this was definitely written a while ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, oh my word. Yeah, uh, and it wasn't like until she mentioned it was a noble at bitter. Like, oh, that's right. Like he yeah. Cared. He was like, wait, what? And then he starts talking to her. Yeah. Going. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We don't like them nobles, of course, because we find out that that's, yeah, the, the vampire, as you said, that Butter is a noble. Mm-hmm. And uh, he uh, he wants a piece of that. Yeah. And then, so, basically, they ride in back to the farm that she, they live on, they live on a ranch or yep. something. And it's sort of yep. a town. Uh, and the lead boy is... Dan. Her, Dan, her, her <laughs> Oh, we should brother. also mention her name's fucking Doris. Yeah, Doris and Dan and D and uh, who else have we talked about so far? Oh, Ray. 
Oh, you have three, oh, but it... we haven't met him yet. Yeah, but the main vampire, the main big bad guy, uh-huh. is called Magnus Lee. Magnus Lee, man. Count Magnus Lee, and he's 10,000 years old. Yeah, yeah, because I think they start talking about that. Yeah, right and he's there. like, well, he must be, must be very strong indeed, yeah. It's 10,000 years. He, he was... He disappeared a while back, and now he's back. Yeah, now he's Cause, back. Could we know know this because the lights are on? <laughs> <laughs> it's light in the castle, uh, and we know he's back. God, uh, that's right. Yeah, he's he's he's, he's yeah. The lights were on in the castle, and nobody had been picking up his mail. <laughs> so <laughs> then, then all of a sudden, the big mountain of mail disappeared, and the lights came back on. It's like, oh shit, he's home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um... So they drive back in, meet the meet the kid brother who's like, you know, instantaneously committed that D is like noble and uh, is not a threat without any yeah. like, introduction. I think he suggests he's like, well, you know, if you were dangerous, I'd probably already be dead. Uh, it was something like that. It's something like uh, along the lines of there's only two reasons for. It says, uh, the doctor told me there's only two reasons for someone to be silent. One is uh, they've they got right. dangerous thoughts in their mind, or two, they've experienced a lot of dangerous thoughts and don't want to talk about that shit. It's like, why is it there's why is there always two reasons? There was two reasons from Doris earlier on, there's two reasons <laughs> from Dan. What's going on? Is that everyone like just like, well, life's binary in the future, I guess. It's ruled by computers, man. Jeez. Zero well, we should ones. mention actually his his horse is a robot horse. Oh yeah, because the the kid goes, oh wow, it's a cybernetic nine thousand or something. Yep, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a robo horse five hundred. Yeah. Uh, fuck, that's I... cool. It's cool as shit. D. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> uh, um, the kid does say, "Oh, the girls in the second one." You... Yeah. Yeah, that's and that's that's where he's like came instantly friends with him, you know. Yeah, uh, I think that there's also, of course, while this is going on, I think Doris is is she not like confronted by the mayor's son, Greco? Um, His name's Greco Roman. No, <laughs> no, not quite. Uh, he um, they go into town, they ride to town in the wagon, and the mayor's son then confronts. You know, Doris, yeah. come here. I need to talk to you in private. And they go into this shady alleyway, and he's yeah. basically like all <laughs> all over. Her. Yeah, I need, I need to talk to you in private. Uh, follow me into this dark alley. D, you're okay with this, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. we're good. Yeah. And uh, he's like, "Well, I know you've been bitten, dude." Type thing. And oh yeah. You don't want me to tell everyone. And then he's like, "To keep it quiet, and then we can." You know, get a better bounty hunter than your lousy one that's in the back of his wagon. And again, it's like you know, and then then I'll do whatever I want with you because that's how you'll pay me. It's like, oh my god, pretty much. What this, he... place, this this place sucks. <laughs> well, at least she's she's uh she waltz him in the face, and he's like, I don't like that. And then she comes with the torch, is like, well, I don't really like getting hit on either, <laughs> <laughs> and walks out. <laughs> Yeah, she does embarrass him, which is pretty good. And then, of course, he runs out going, Ah, oh, she's been by a vampire! Fuck! Yeah, yeah, she's got a bit. And this, and so no, no one like, needs to know unless I shout to everyone that they need to know. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, yes. Yeah, and then it's uh, basically the, the kid brother finds out and goes, Oh, no. And I yep. think uh, like, Dee basically tells the kid, Don't worry, you've got to be strong type thing. Hide your tears. I like. I, That's terrible. I, I like. I yeah, yes. I liked that D was like you know you got to be strong, and it's mm. like you know you know it's, it's okay to cry, and you're like oh that, this is nice, and he's like but don't fucking cry around your sister. She doesn't need your shit right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like oh my god, what's wrong with you? It is <laughs> man. You can't be showing that. That's a sign. Of, that's how man's work. You know, don't cry in front of people. <laughs> But it was just it's like a, a kind of like sweet moment of it's like oh no he's like he's you know telling him it's like it's okay like it's all mm. right to feel like this but don't feel like this around her no <laughs> don't you dare <laughs> yeah don't do that shit. Um, he's like, all right i won't um of course then the then the mayor 
and the doctor get involved in a big conversation. Everyone gets involved with this argument about how they have to incarcerate uh, Doris because mm-hmm. she's gonna she's gonna turn and they can't have that. And it's like we'll send her to the fucking vampire camp. Yeah, that's what oh. we're gonna do. A campire. And, um... Campire. <laughs> campire. Uh, oh Jesus! It's 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 really bad because this bit is a bit. And then the guy goes, "Oh, I don't know about that. Remember what happened the last time we did that?" And the guy goes, "Hmm, good point. What was it that happened the last time?" <laughs> Pretty much. And it turns and out, like, yeah. Turns out the noble didn't like it, so he came in and killed like a bunch of people in the village, and then it's the person like went insane. Thousands of people. <laughs> it's yeah. like you know he killed it killed a lot of people and then that person went crazy it's like yeah, yeah. Mm. it's still our law maybe. though <laughs> yeah it's a law but maybe maybe you should consider changing that beforehand yeah. uh but then d's like hey just trust her to me uh and it'll be all right can, can we talk about the fact the doctor uh i think his name is dr ferengo uh-huh. but every time i heard it i heard it's dr lou ferengo yeah so he's the hulk to me i guess is what i'm saying the hulk Lou Ferrigno. Yeah. Oh, is yeah. he like the? He was he like the original Hulk. In yeah, the Do- Lou Ferrigno was the original original big green Hulk man. All right. All right yeah. Okay. I, don't I think, think he's was. the only human to play the Hulk. Oh, the of the human without, CGI. Without, C- without CGI, he's the only the only human to to play. So. Yeah, well, you know, Marvel TV shows didn't really have the budget back in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just yeah, paint the guy cool. green. <laughs> <laughs> he's a big guy. Um, he is a big guy. He was in like um shit, that's right, he's still big. He was in the original Avengers? No, Hulk movie. Was he he was in the original Avengers, I think, as a security guard as well. I thought it was in the original Hulk movie he was a security guard, or the second one. You know, when they switched it up after the original one plot. He was in one of them. I liked I liked the Ang Lee Hulk movie. I didn't hate it as much as everyone else did. I thought it was fine. Yeah, they're all all okay. Um, yes, I think what I'm saying is is the Hulk is kind of a boring character, and uh... <laughs> I don't know. He has he has this thing where he's basically. kind of like, ah, I get hungry and I'll smash things when I get angry and then, you know, like the the colonel doesn't help matters in, yeah. in any form of way in the Hulk because he's like, you know what I'm going to like attack you because you're a dangerous threat uh, yeah, that doesn't work, colonel you might need to rethink your actions and maybe try and work with them <laughs> Make, make, to make, make Hold you, yourself accountable, sir. Yeah. Don't don't make you, uh, you know, don't threaten the guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's probably a good point. But yeah, uh, after Dr. Dr. Lou Ferrigno, they're like, okay, fine. You can look after her. Uh, mm. And then they all go back to the farm. Um, Eventually, yeah. They're, they're trying to go to the store and the store is like, no, nah, we ain't selling <laughs> the, no fucking shit to you guys because it's a Western that's right i need all these things uh well we ain't got none that, that's a disgrace when you can quite clearly see that you have all these items it's like yes i know i just don't want to sell this stuff to you <laughs> yeah. all my customers are running the building yeah 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 i'm sorry it's like, but you've known me for years it's like uh whatever you're a vampire now yeah filthy <laughs> vampire yep get, get good out of my, get my fu- oh god the less said, the better. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they they don't get their supplies. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I don't think so. Uh, no, I, I I don't think so. They certainly go back to the farm anyway, and yeah, then, then the farm gets attacked. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, D goes right. So shit's going to happen tonight because tomorrow night's the. Oh god, this is another sign of the eighties. It's the the woman's moon, uh, the woman's moon, because hey, it's like oh wait, do you know anything about that moon? Oh, I know about that moon. That's the moon that turns red once a month, and you're like, oh, this is definitely not some sort of 
horrific metaphor for a woman's period. Is it? Might not be. I, I mean, it's it absolutely is. But it might not be. <laughs> be <laughs> culture. I don't know. It's certainly there's in the. I think Jack, Japanese folklore, the moon turns red for like demons and shit. Oh yeah, yeah, it does because it does that in uh, Breath of the Wild as well. Yeah, yeah. I've been watching um, Oni, the story of the Thunder God. It's on Netflix. Finally, Netflix original. Is it actually though? Is... <laughs> it's done by some guy from some guy that did, it was a picture and said a wee kind of stop motion animation. I don't think All it's right. true stop motion though, but it's certainly done in sense of stop motion Ooh. frames. I would say. Well, yeah, there's definitely the whatever the mother's the mo- woman's moon or the mother's moon or something like that, mm-hmm. and it's like because shit's gonna go down because they're gonna be powerless to do anything about it tomorrow night. Uh, no, they just think it's a sin to drink blood or something in that is night. Is that what it is? Something like that, because uh, they do end up taking her on that night anyway. So the first night comes, and it's this is where we meet Ray and the daughter, Lar- La Armica, La Armica, yeah. Who's like ah, oh, filthy humans. Filthy humans. She's she's basically green haired Doris. Green haired Doris. Well, maybe she was the first one. Maybe that's the one that we saw at the start. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's not because. But she is, she's basically green haired Doris with like. Purple jewel princess Leia pigtail things. Yeah, weird, weird eyes too though. Like proper, like kind of <clears throat> water, watery based goldfish eyes. Oh, oh yeah, I guess so. They have, like, she's a uh, she she, she definitely looks pure evil. Um, yeah. And then uh, a big guy arrives too. <laughs> <laughs> a real big guy, you know, like crush the. Sentry Towers or something like that? Or is that another night? Is that's that the it. second that's, night? That's the second night. Nah. So the first night they come and D's there and it's like, ah, oh, yeah. I ain't going to do things with you type thing. But then she goes, like, Ray, you go and do it. And he's got like some weird sword boomerang thing. He does. It's it's like uh, that movie, Dark, uh, that game, Dark Sector. <laughs> no, Dark Sector? Basically, it's, I, I believe the word, the technical term for it is a glaive. Oh, all right, it's, yeah. Um, so yeah, he has one of those. Yeah, he has one of those, and it kind of cuts things up. And then Dee's like, "Ha ha, I, I, I will stop you." It's like, no, what? How did, you're stronger. Than I thought you are. Type thing, and he like beats him up proper, and then he goes in with this big sword to stab the guy. Yep, and then like this is the only time in the movie that ever seems to work. I don't know why. It, yep, certainly is. <laughs> uh, and then it looks like he's somehow stabbed himself. Yep, and the reason is is because it turns out he has the ability to twist space around him. Yeah, yeah. So he's... in that one scene of the movie, yeah, the circle through through the raised body, and, it's, uh, and then yep. He goes as he's got like a big blade coming out of his back, which is the continuation yep. of his sword. I was like, Jesus, okay. So, and he's like, So Ray's loving it. Uh, and he's like, I've heard a mutant that can do this shit because he's a mutant. And it's like, <laughs> Are, Is that you? And it's like, Yes, that is me. This is after he got stabbed. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's... he's, the, the, of course, as we're revealing everyone's power. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Ray's power is that he can twist space time, and uh, and it turns out that D is actually himself a dampier, which is uh, uh, a child of a vampire and a human. Yeah, uh, and actually, <clears throat> I did a little bit of reading, and apparently, in I, I can't remember what language it is, uh, but the literal translation for dampier is teeth drinker. Teeth drinker. Yeah. Nice. It drinks teeth. Good uh good um enamel. <laughs> it's D. supposed to be milk, but yeah. yeah. Oh <laughs> vitamin, <laughs> vitamin hunter D. <laughs> That's really why he's called D. 
Anyway, because um, <laughs> it's all about getting his vitamin D. Yeah, always getting he needs his vitamin D. Sure. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Um, <clears throat> I I can't remember how kind of scare him away type thing. Well, Sorry. I think he he sort of surprises him mm-hmm. that that's the thing he can do, uh, and I think he he sort of like is like, hey, you you get on out of here, and you fucking tell Lee Count General the Count Count the General Lee to uh, leave leave everyone alone, yeah, because I'm here, so they leave, but then they're like, oh, <laughs> we'll come back, <laughs> we'll come back the next day, I guess. Uh, yeah. Well, he, yeah. So he tells everyone to go away, and they go and they do, and they turn to the castle, and the the noble spins some cloud thing, and tells them, "Oh, he's a dumb year and oh, they've returned, and then yep, the daughter is really upset that she that her father's going to bring impure blood into the thing, and. She was praying to the picture of Dracula for power of some sort. Yep. It was weird. Because yep. that's another thing that was like kind of mentioned at the start, but didn't go anywhere. Technically. Right. It's like, yeah, we're going to do that. And it didn't help her in any form. And then yep. Ray went and speak to the noble and got berated. And then came out to tell the daughter to go to bed. And she's like, you can't yep. tell me what to do. And then he's like, "Well, no, I, that didn't come from me. That came from your father." And type thing. Yeah. And he tried to put his hand on her, and he's like, "Don't touch me, Phil. Low, low, low class fiend yeah. or something." She, uh, she's definitely making it quite clear that she just doesn't like anybody in this world, even Appar- her father. Yeah, apparently, yeah. Uh, and then she. He, Ray's ambition is to come like them, and she's like, "You're never going to do that." Yeah, or, or, or at the very least, he wants enough power to like have a say in the way things are run. Yeah. Um. In order to do that, of course, he's going to need to uh, capture D. It would seem. Yeah. Or, or not capture D. Bring bring Lee Doris somehow. Um. Which is, I guess, sort of how this next bit then goes, where they're like, yeah, fuck it. Yesterday didn't work. I guess we'll try the same thing, but this time we'll bring werewolves and things, and they'll be like a big guy, and he'll crush the, the oh, shit what? out of stuff. And... No, no. 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 Uh, D-, D goes to the castle. Oh, wait, he leaves first. Yeah, you're right. That's I was D- going to D- say. Goes... Yeah. So D I left comes... out the important part where he's no longer there to do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he goes to the castle. And basically fights his way into the castle, meets up with Ray again, and some yeah. witch person who's controlling like a ghost. Yeah, ghost jaguar. Kind of going... She looks insane. Yeah, yeah, like a ghost jaguar that he just slashes and it goes away. I uh, know it didn't go away. Does it get trapped in a door? No, no. He basically like he goes in and there's like some beast in like this corridor and he walks through that and then yeah. picks him up and then he gets into the courtyard and the big crunk guy that you're talking about throws yep. boulders over the wall at him. That's right. And then yeah, that guy. he disappears at that point. Like he just like throws some yeah. stuff and then goes, I know there no more for you to do anything. <laughs> Sorry, okay. And then he gets into another bit and then we haven't really mentioned that he has got like a talking hand. Well, I, that's that's the the part. Uh, this is the first part where it kind of means something. Yeah, because there was a bit. Because a bit before the whole night when he's there, and the the night was like, he, his hand or this voice, but you don't know mm-hmm. his hand at the time. You don't know is his hand, but is there? Yeah, and he's basically a whole. Oh, what's this? You showing emotions, D? What's this? This is something like you. You fallen in love, nah, and like provoking him. Like oh. type thing, and it's like no, helping the kid out. That's not like you either. Give him yeah. moral advice. What the fuck none, of, none of this is good. All yeah. these things are bad. D, you're not looking out for yourself. Like yeah. me. Uh, I I don't know. Like they never never quite 
says what it is, to be honest. Um, although it's described on the Wikipedia page as a symbiote. Yeah, well, yeah that makes sense since yeah. well, later in the film it, makes, it kind of goes that way. And I think there's a fight scene where he shit gets thrown at him or something and he, like, and he holds his hand up. And holds his hand up. And it inhales sucks. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Uh, I remember being so confused by that when I was watching it as a kid as well. Like, just like, I don't... Because I think as it, like, you know, growing up in the West and watching, like, Western movies and things like that, where things are basically spelled out for you all the time. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, so... Like, why does he have a talking hand? Because he does. It's like, they've not said anything about it. They're showing me the talking hand like I've seen the talking hand before. I've never seen the talking hand... Did I miss a bit? Did I fall asleep? Is there something? No, no. You. This is just the talking hand now. It's, it was really weird because yeah, that is the, the first bit because you don't actually see the hand. It's all just kind of wrapped up. Yep. Uh, yeah, he's got it, his gloves but, on. Yeah, and then when the original bit where they're getting slid off, he was like examining his blade. And I thought it was his blade talking. Yeah. Rather than the hat. Which... The hand, but <laughs> rather than a face, and, and we should mention as well, le legitimately just a face on the palm of his hand. Oh yeah, yeah, eyes and a mouth. And a mouth. Yeah, at least yeah, weird, weird ass. But yeah, he sort of like fights his way through this bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but, and if I remember rightly, yeah, as you say, Ray and this old woman are like, ha ha, and then she pulls like a Monty Burns trapdoor on him. Uh, yeah, well. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Ray does or something. So the, he gets to the corridor. He's fighting this ghost jagger, and he says it slices up, but he doesn't. And yeah, he tries to. It's oh, that's a ghost type thing. Yeah, and then it bites his arm. And he's like, ah, oh, okay. Only well, one thing to do: punches a hole through the wall. That, that that's it. That's it. Because it, and it's not just one punch. He just punches that wall <clears throat> over and over and over, really angrily. And it's like, oh. What? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why was that the only thing you could do? Yeah, I don't know. He must sense like where the witch was. Um, and then the witch makes a comment of like, "Oh, you're pretty impressive, getting surviving the jaguar without losing an arm type thing." You know, it's all good. Uh, and then fucking jaguar. Ray appears and goes, "Ha ha." I want to kind of end you here, but my master says I got to do this, and like kind of slices the ground in half, and he goes, ah. and then his cloak, yeah. his cloak comes alive. These cloak comes alive, and somehow and like grabs hold onto uh onto the ledge, and like yep. Ray's like, nope, and cuts that bit off. <laughs> yeah, it, there's so much going on here. It's like once again, it's like the only other time you kind of see the cloak do anything, <laughs> other than cover his face. Yeah. Uh, oh, did, did we tell... <sighs> he got into the castle because the drawbridge was slightly ajar and he got launched from his like, horse and over the moat. Yeah. Uh, right. And flew in. Um, so he falls down into it and his, the hand goes, I told you it was a trap. And he's like, yeah, I know. And then... Uh, <laughs> He's walking through the caverns underneath the, the, the castle and gets into like a it's like the I think it was like ruins from the the war like thousands of years yeah. ago because it's not set recent in the future it's like no it's pretty far flung it's it's pretty it's pretty much like a good we'll never this podcast will probably be well dead <laughs> when you reach the time that's that's meant to be set I've, it's sort of set so far in the future that nobody remembers what now is like. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they mention oh, it's like the past war that happened. Uh, and he's walking through the cavern, gets to the pool of water, and there's like these three kind of siren people kind of like... Yep. Da, 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 playing harps. Uh, Topless sirens playing weird not harps. I don't think they were harps. Well, they're stringed instruments that were on a U, so... Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know what 
Maybe it is a heart for that. I'm sure they probably got a different name for a smaller heart type thing. Because I think hearts are the big things that kind of like rest on your shoulder. Small harp. No, handheld harp. Handheld what harp. is a little harp called? A lyre. A lyre. There you go. Yeah. We'll go with a lyre. Uh, anyway, so they're playing this week, kind of tune like sirens, and go, Who are you? What's your name? type thing. And he's like, Who are you? What are you? And they're like, Ah, we're these big three kind of lizard things. You know, can't really bother with them. Well, it's, he says, Who are you three? Who are we three? And they just keep repeating the same shit, and then yeah, they turn into like weird. Look at what we are, and then they just wrap them up. Yeah, wrap them up. Um, uh, and then uh, they're going to just like suck his energy out. Yep. Yeah. We don't we don't find that out until uh, Doris gets to the castle though. Well, I think, no, I think they say they're going to savor him because it's been a while since they had anyone. Do they? I think so. Oh. Uh. I don't hey. remember that bit. I just remember it later being discussed. Yeah. But yeah, this is a, a good opportunity then to attack the farm again and uh Yeah. Get get Doris. Get Doris. <laughs> yeah, bring everyone in. Uh and the doctor's there and and the kid brother and they all kinda of like try and fight, but like yep. you have like a dude a demon that shoots like bugs at him. And the doctor's like <laughs> the green ah. guy that just goes Bleh! and fires spiders all over his face. Yeah, oh, which is flies and they're like hives in the butt. It's very weird. And the doctor's like ah, as he would be. <laughs> yeah, uh, fair then, fair reaction. Yeah. Anyway, so basically, they take Doris away. I think Doris willingly goes to save her one. She does. She cuts a deal. She says, "If I go with you, will you leave everyone else alive?" Oh, and, and he's they like, said, "Yeah, that's fine." No, no, it's not. I can't be. I can't be having that. They they would make good meat. It's like, well, I ain't going with you. I'm going to bite my tongue off and bleed. To oh death. yeah, she threatens to bite her own tongue off. That's right. And, and then and he's like, "Fine, fine." That's, <clears> that's I do have right. to bring you alive. So yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, also. Put that, put that away. It's unseemly or something. <laughs> she just stick oh, yeah. her tongue out. She's sticking her tongue out. God, <laughs> yeah. there's some really weird references to like being rude and things like that in this movie. It's all about nobility, uh, nobility and um, equity, e equity, e etiquette, etiquette. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's see, because like that's the reason why the doctor do daughter is trying to eject to her being. The new bride to, uh, that's right, Mangus Blackness. No, we'll go with Mangus. Mangus is much better. Mangus, <laughs> Gen <laughs> good old uh, Count General Lee Mangus. Lee Mangus. Um, yeah. so yeah, so she gets captured and goes, Ah, oh, well, it's fine, I'll be saved by the in no time. Okay, I think they had a wee discussion. Her and the doc had a discussion for farm gets attacked where the doc basically says, like I think you like the guy too much. He shouldn't be liking this guy. He's you shouldn't, got, you shouldn't be doing that. He's got dangerous eyes. <laughs> and she's like, What do you mean? Oh well he's seen a lot of shit. <laughs> uh, he's got dangerous eyes, as opposed to his dangerous sword or his cybernetic horse or like all the other potential red flags that D has. Uh, the eyes are maybe not the one I'd go. Mm. Well, I mean, Sora's not really a red flag. He shows that he can defend himself. The horse is I, I, pretty not, you know, not really a red flag in my eyes. I, I think the I eyes are the fact that he's obviously a hunter and he goes around killing things. <laughs> but there are two, two red flags. <laughs> well, either way, he... Uh, she gets kidnapped, of course, mm. uh, and then brought to to General Mangus or whatever mm. his name is, uh, Count Lee, yeah. and he's like, "Look, look, they're they're, they're they've been in, in in ecstasy all day, taking his energy away." Yeah, and Amir... they're just like licking licking him in the face. Yeah, and uh, Amir, uh, human with the past, like 
hours, like yeah. uh, minutes within minutes of them, but he's was lasted to half a day. Yeah. Um, and then he basically explains her the plan of what he's wanting to do with her. He wants to marry her. He's like, I ain't going to yep. marry you. No way, type thing. Nope. And then he's like, Well, you you should go retire to your quarters and then <laughs> just <laughs> puts her to sleep, I think. <laughs> Get some rest because uh it's interesting you think that what you say matters in this equation. Yeah. <laughs> you get married tomorrow. Uh yes. And then D is in the clutches of the snake ladies. Yep. Uh who are exhausted from depleting all the hit energy. Yep. Like, yeah, like it's scrumptious, but I'm fatigued and then D's uh, vampire nature awakens and yep. he bites one of them and then chops the other ones up too. Yep. Mate gets his way out. Yeah. Uh, goes to begin the rescue operation. Because oh, yeah. uh, basically this whole thing is uh, oh, we're going to come and get her. Oh, that didn't work. I'm going to come and tell you to fucking stop this shit. And then yeah. he gets done. And then at the same time, oh, well, we're going to go and get her because we know that you're here. And then yeah. they bring her here. And we're about to find out that he's going to go, ha ha, time to go. And then they're going to go back home. And then it's going to be a case of, well, we got to get her back somehow. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh my God, this whole thing is just like passing this poor woman back and forward. Yeah, I was, uh, the daughter is, um, the Count's daughter is actually in the room about to like put a, a stake through her or something, kill her off. Yeah. Because she's like, does not want any of that. And then D bars and steals her and runs out of the castle, killing the witch, I think, this time on the way out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that almost just seems spiteful. Yeah. It's like he was running away super fast already. Like he could have yeah. just left. But no, no. The witch has to die. Uh, and then the giant grabs him just as he jumps off the drawbridge. Yeah, um, he, but he stabs it through the face, does he? And many other places. Well, oh, no. I think it's trying to—it's trying to hang on to the. It's coming down in the drawbridge, and he cuts the the ropes, the, the, the ropes, and then it falls over and somehow loses half of its body. Wakes up screaming. That was a random explosion thing. I don't know yeah. what what that was all about. It just can't happen. Uh, and then he gets and then, back to the then it gets st- Well, he sta- yeah, he stabs it in the head, and then Ray's like, "Oh shit." What's happened here? <laughs> <laughs> and he yeah. uh, he then begins the process of running after him because he goes back to because of course he needs to prove himself to to Count Lee. Mm-hmm. So he runs back to town after them as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's staying at a, a local motel or something like that. A uh, local inn. Yeah. Uh, and uh, wasn't it? The mayor's son. Yeah, Gre- Greco's like, oh, fuck, he's here. Got to listen in to that. And it turns yeah. out that they just have every room bugged with security cameras and audio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is one of the flashing light scenes. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is a bit where it kind of flashes a bit weirdly. Um, and now there's a weird dude with a gas mask. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, Ray's like, oh, you've come to kill me? And he's like, no. No, you know that like you're far more powerful than we are. Uh, Pretty much. But we have come with an advantage. Hey, here's some time bewitching incense. It's a candle, uh, and it's the idea is that it weakens a vampire's blood uh, and causes it causes a problem. It's a candle in a ladle. Yeah, a golden it's a, ladle. It's real, it's real dumb. Uh, yeah, and then. And then is this the this is the part where he's like oh gee thanks uh and of course greco's been overhearing this whole thing mm-hmm. and then ray turns back up at the farm and is like ha ha here i am motherfuckers yeah. and he's like he goes oh but have you seen this and starts waving the <laughs> the incense yeah. and of course it goes into slow motion with d and his hands like oh, careful d that's time bewitching incense and then it does fucking nothing <laughs> yeah <laughs> and he's like wait why is this not working 
Uh, and uh, D goes, well, I think someone's did such old such a room on you. <laughs> and then to prove that that's the case, that's his fucking hand off. Yeah, it's a uh, left hand. <laughs> oh yeah, he cut, cuts the hand with the time bewitching incense in it off. And yeah. then uh, he says, oh shit, he's because uh, the whole thing is that they've I, 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 that's the problem is they get back and mm. then they've managed to Ray takes Dan away. That's what it is. Because Dan was like shooting some shit out in the far reaches of the 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 farm. Oh yeah. And he gets he gets scooted away. Uh, and then Ray's left with the rest of them. Yeah. But then he's like, turns out the candle was a fake. And uh, he says that he like he's writhing about, holding his arm. It's like, oh, how dare you be so rude or something like that. And it's like, why, why your hands cut off? <laughs> yeah. Be, be differently remember. angry. No. <laughs> it's just rude. It's just everything's rude. Uh, uh, I'm leaving Doris in the farm, and then the doctor appears. Oh yeah, Do- like... Doctor F- Lu- Doctor Lou Ferrigno is back, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Ah, oh, I have an idea, Doris. Well, now that now that things have gone bad, and you know, D is having to go and Get find out what's happening because they leave a note." And the note's written on a letter that only hunters can decipher. Um, and it says, uh, you know, D, you have to come. And she's like, well, why wouldn't they just, like, ask you to bring me there? And he's like, no, no, uh, that's that, there's no honour in that. And also, somebody just wants me fucking dead. <laughs> yeah, <very much. laughs> so, yeah, the, the, the doctor's like, hey, since all this shit's going down, maybe, maybe what we should do is go to these ruins that are covered in, like, these powerful words that keep vampires out and it's like oh hey that's a great idea why didn't we do that to start with oh oh you know there's a reason for that uh oh, so no i know I, a... I like the whole time i was just like oh fuck this guy no, he's been turned uh so basically he's <laughs> they're on a wagon going yep. some long some rocky kinds and then the daughter appears and goes no yep. you can't be like can't be wiring my father type thing. I'm going to kill you. Yeah. And then. And uh, yeah, Larma, Larmica. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So she's like, oh, well, I can take you on with my trusted whip. And then the doc goes, no. And snatches them off and is like, what you did, doc? It's like, ah, oh, I'm not your doctor anymore. I'm. Can we, can we talk about this, though, right? Because it's, it's not so much a case of. Uh... You know, um, hey, uh, oh, he snatched that whip. It's like, oh, no, what he did was is he clawed her top off. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, very it's... briefly. But then it's miraculously back on. Oh, she fixed it. Yeah. She did put the yeah. back up. It's, oh, Jesus. And then... Yeah, and then... <clears throat> he's, bit, he's quite lecherous yeah. over as well. Yeah, yeah, he's like, oh, yeah should have should have broken me a piece of this off while i was like you know normal and shit maybe maybe the count will let me do that before she's dead and then armica's like i'm fucking sick of your shit and just (laughs) nixes him immediately uh with good old stake to the heart yeah Uh, it's like it's it's pretty good fuck you fuck that guy uh and then suddenly the mirror sun appears greg greg yeah uh, Greco, Greco Roman, <laughs> yeah, Greco-Roman. and he has the he has the actual time bewitching incense. Yeah, uh, as the daughter goes, Aah! yeah, it's it's a uh, sort of a uh, vaguely confused between is she in pain? Is she weirdly aroused by this? It's very difficult to tell. And mm-hmm. then she kind of collapses, and you're like, oh, okay, maybe it was pain. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. I'm trying to remember, it's like, because obviously he's got the candle and is like, well, time to, is it not like time to kill the, uh, the count? The, well, no, time, time to kill Larmica. Uh, yeah. is he not gonna stab her? Uh, she was, she was going to get rid of her because she's like a noble of, of stuff. Yeah. It's like, oh, why do that? Doris, like, just lies over the top of her and is like, no, don't do that. It's like, well, okay. You didn't want to put your own self at risk, and then my favorite bit of the entire movie happens. Um, was it, where... was 
Yes. <laughs> so good. Yeah, so but good. I think it's mainly because, you know, the mere something's trying, like, oh, I'm going to do this, or we're going to, and then you'll be mine type thing. Because I'll yeah. be great, and you'll love me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, he's doing it for selfish gain, of course, but yeah, yeah the, uh, but then, then he's also like, then, the, well, I was gonna say then, then Dan and D turn up, uh, yeah, because he's he's managed to get Dan back, uh, and the most <laughs> amazing thing happens, <laughs> Dan just straight up mercs Greco with a sniper <laughs> rifle from distance, shooting him off a cliff. Yeah, <laughs> it's so good. It's so unexpected. But it's so good. He really, he really hits him. It's amazing. So yeah. great. He, he falls, falls down this massive cliff. Yep. It's it's so good. He yeah. fucking deserved it. It was great. <laughs> oh yeah. <clears throat> Loved it. Loved it. Uh. And then they're going. Yeah, I think they go back and the what's her name wakes up. Yes. And these like, you know, we can't be doing this for the bloodline type thing. No ability and all that shit. And he's like, you don't know shit. Yeah. You don't know about the truth. Your your ancestor was a, of a very much a different opinion from all your noble rules at the moment. Uh, referring to Dracula. Yes. And, and then, then they let her go. Back but, to the castle. Yeah, uh, certainly they don't keep her hostage because they don't need her. Yeah, I, I and, and is this the bit where? Her. I think so. I think there's a <clears throat> there's a big bit where it's like D and Doris are having a conversation because of course she's in love with with D all of a sudden. Um, mm. and she's like, you know, maybe we should just leave. Yeah. Uh, and and then. <laughs> And then it's, it's like, yeah, because, you know, like right now you could just do anything to me if you wanted. And he's like, no, I don't think that's a good idea. And then he see, gets a glimpse of her neck and he's like, ah, oh, delicious neck blood. Um, and and then it's like, ah, oh, and she's like, no, you can bite me. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so, so bizarrely submissive. Yeah. And... Uh, but he's like, no, I can't. I'm going to go back to sleep on the couch. Thanks. Yeah, you can't be doing that. Uh, and he push, pushes it away. Nearly, that, yep. nearly for succumbs, and it's like, oh, you can do it. Um, <laughs> what happens next, then? Uh, they, uh, this is the bit where I think, I can't remember where it happens, but it turns out that Greco is not dead. Yeah, he kind of walks along, and then... Which I was super bummed out about. Um, yeah, well, he's not quite dead at that point. And I think, does he meet no. Ray? He does, because Ray's like, oh, shit, you're the, you're the motherfucker that stole my incense. Yeah. And he's like, um, oh, no. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, uh, and then yeah. Ray turns up to the farm again. Yes, and he stakes D... Oh, and cuts off his arm. Yeah, he, he, he causes him a lot of pain, and then Doris is captured again. Jesus wept, and taken back to the castle. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is the kind of <clears throat> where Ray gets into the conversation with, like, Lee. He's like, I've done the thing for you. She's here now. Um, give Meet me eternal, because uh, I want to be part of the nobility. And he's like, to talk to me in 50 years. Yeah, and he's like, "Fuck you!" <laughs> it's like, what? And she yeah, has... he's, he's not happy about that at all. Also, has like the discussion with his daughter, because his daughter senses that D is dead slash unconscious. Yeah, he felt it when, he, when, he, he felt it when D got staked by Ray. Mm-hmm. He was cut off the hand. And he's lying there, and all you hear is like. D, D, wake up! You gotta wake up, D. As they get taken away to the castle, um, that's right. 
and the daughter's basically say, you can't be marrying her, that she's impure to, yep. to the family. And then the revelation turns out, it's like, well, I did it with your mother. Your mother was That's here. right. <laughs> You're already filled with pure and filthy blood. Yeah. <laughs> you high and mighty noblest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's like, she's obviously not happy about that either. Yeah. Um, and then I think we, we cut back to D, who's face first on the ground. And uh, one of these red dust clouds that we've seen floating about, we actually get to see it in action, and it like <laughs> attacks a cow and starts devouring it. Oh well, at the start we saw it. At the start when they were Did coming we see it to the actually farm. doing anything though. Yeah, it attacked the sheep, the the zombie sheep thing because they were green. I don't remember. I didn't remember it actually doing anything. I just yeah, remember yeah. It being shot and, at and going and, away. And uh, Dan was shooting at it because he was like. Uh. Well, okay, away from we, see my, it devour, my sheep. we see it devour the cow thing, the sheep cow thing, mm -hmm. and uh, Dee's hand's like, ah, oh, man, not looking good here. Uh, hey, hey, wake up. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, I know what to do. <laughs> it just starts taking fistfuls of dirt and eating it. Yeah. Well, and then it, it, it does it twice. I think three times, but his hand was three. severed. And before that, he the hand he did the whole uh, Adam family thing thing where he walks yeah, along that's and right. uh, gets and back uh, attached, re reattaches his hand. Hence, yeah, he eats dirt. <laughs> yeah, and then and then, it, and then it goes, oh shit, that didn't work. And it's like, what was this supposed to do? I, I, I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. What, he, he what were you expecting? He basically did that and then tried to suck things in, did the whole sucky in motion. Well, no, he did that eventually. Uh, took That's... the big inhale. Yeah, he did, did the like, three or four lumps of dirt big and then did the big inhale. Of dirt. And then the thing's, oh shit, the, the clouds noticed us and yeah. it's coming and towards And he starts us. punching D. <laughs> yeah. like, Wake up, you sack of shit, we've got to do something. Yeah. And then he gets up and then. The cloud he explodes. Cuts it in, into slices it through and it just turns into meat rain. Yeah. Don't you know Which is was pretty good. Yeah. Nah, no clue. Um so yeah, well while, while that's happening, uh the uh the wedding is now on. Count mm. and Doris are about to, to get married, and Dan has managed to uh infiltrate the castle. Oh, I think he got captured too. Did he? I just think he they didn't lock up very well, and he scraped through some pipes. I just, I just, I was just gonna say, it just it, it reminded me of uh, the scenes in in uh, Final Fantasy VII of going around the the Mako plant in Midgar. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> like what do, 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 yeah. do, do, running over all the pipes. What, what's with that though? What, what's with like I the architecture the of like futuristic castles and I, I don't know. I don't know. Like it's so confusing. So many and pipes. then he like balances a little bit and then he's like oh there's that motherfucker down there i'm gonna I'm gonna murk him oh uh, yeah yeah this this is for ray um so he yeah. goes <laughs> goes jump and his uh his sister's kind of like she's, in, a, she's in, a, in, a, in a trance in a trance of some sort yeah yeah and he he goes oh, die and he kind of launches <clears throat> himself and then he's like ah pathetic and then throws him he just he literally like tries to double axe handle him from distance. Yeah. Bounces off of Lee, <laughs> flies away. And then you're like, well, that's the end of Dan. Yeah. Uh, but then, and, and then we see someone go Yeah. And swipe him out of the air. Was, um, I thought it was D. Yeah, I, I thought it was D at first, but then I thought, mm. No. No, it wasn't. Uh, but Turn, it turns out it's Ray. He did. He fell for a while before that happened. Though. He sure did, yeah. Like it was going to be, it was going to be a case of certain death by the time he got to the ground. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, and dude. then, yeah, and then it was Ray, and then Ray interrupts the perfect, the procession to the hall with the, the incense. Cool. Goes, ah, I got the incense. And he's like, yep. and Noble's like, oh, you think that. Uh, 
that can stop me. And he kind of well, he he does let it to start with a little bit because yeah. he thinks he's he thinks he's got onto it. He's like, oh yeah, this is it. And he's like, nah, man, sorry, this <laughs> yeah. is this ain't gonna do it. And he's like, well, you've outlived your usefulness. <laughs> and then like properly brutalizes him. It's amazing. Yeah, it bounces off like all all the walls impossible in that place. Oh, and then oh, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, like he gets slammed upside down on his head, like standing up on his head on oh. the walkway, and then yeah. slid across. It's like oh my god, and uh-huh. then he gets like hung upside down, cross above the doorway, and forced into it until his head explodes. Yeah, and then Noble's like quality. It's certainly been a lively day. <laughs> yeah, it's like, man, I love a wedding. <laughs> yeah, it's been a lively day, and the he also yeah. complained to her Doris that she's been no end, no end but trouble for her. You know. Yeah, he's like, you know, I've never gone to this much trouble for a human before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it's uh, so good. So well, yeah, I I really really enjoyed that part. So <laughs> yeah, I think this is the part where yeah, it's almost like this is gonna he's gonna seal the deal. Mm-hmm. And and make the final bite, as it were. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then D interrupts him, in in a glorious fashion by throwing a dagger. Yep. Into his and, eye. Well, I was looking at it for ages, because he kind of just goes hmm, and turns around, and I was like, what's wrong with the frame here? What is that thing? And then it <laughs> just like <laughs> holds on to it and pulls his own eye out, and then it reforms and goes back in. I was like, "Oh, that was leg- like just legitimately a dagger was thrown through your own face." Yeah, and you're just okay with that. I see. Okay. I see it's what's happened here. Immoral. That's, that's was, why was, vampires was, are pretty good, pretty nasty. And it's like, "Ha, yeah. ah, you're here," type thing. And D gets bounced around by him because he's got like. Special telekinesis power so he can move objects yep. with his mind. Yep. That's mind bullets. Yep, fucking mind bullets. Kyle. And then he's like, "Well, you're about to, you're about to die. I guess you are. Uh, guess you weren't really a very good hunter, were you?" Yeah. And then D awakens his own telekinetic powers. Is like, wait, no, why, wait. how? Oh wait, oh wait. He gets hung up, and basically. The noble that uh, Magnus goes. Ah, I, this is the way I killed Ray. That's a bit unfortunate. He starts trying, then he's getting overconfident. Starts using the sword yeah, to kill. That's right. Kill D, and he's like. Then D manages to fucking stab him through the heart and pin him to a wall. Yeah. Yeah. And he's uh he's bleeding, bleeding real bad. Yeah. yeah. Um. And. He's like. He, he's think, like um, looking at the picture next to him, which yeah. is, I believe, is Dracula, and then looks at D, yeah. and then looks at Dracula, and then looks at D, and then looks at Dra- It's kind of like the Kung Fu, uh, the Kong Pao moment where they just kind of zoom on in on random things. Where... Panda! <laughs> well. I think this is the bit where uh, is it not like where La Armica is sort of uh, saying to him, "It's like just look, just stop this. We don't need any of this." Yeah, and he's like, "I'll be damned if I, you know, don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> if I have to fucking die doing this, I'll do it." Yeah, and it's like, "Oh, okay." And then he's like, "Hey, uh, La Armica, why don't you come and like, you know, not have to deal with this crap because this castle is coming down." Like as soon as soon as this guy dies, this castle just just gonna crumble into yeah. bits. Yeah, Lamarcar was like, "Oh, uh, I should die with the castle because yep. I am of noble blood, and we're obviously because Dee's been mentioning it at least twice in the in this thing where they're translucent." Oh, sorry, uh, they are. They that's happened twice. You're correct. Is that you are but transient beings. Uh, Transient guests upon yeah. this realm. Yeah. You shouldn't be here type thing. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, she finally got upset the first time because that was like the first time to meet. And then also the second time they're saying it again. Um, 
yeah and she's like no well if you're saying that then i'll off and go but he's, he's like well you have human blood in you you you, yep. you can be like me you could be human and well not human but close you, you, you have control of your destiny more than yes the, the nobles do and she's like <laughs> more than the guy that's pinned to the wall causing the castle to crumble yeah and it's like uh no no i am with him i have i have no human blood in me what you tell me is a lie uh even though she's already been told that by her father yep uh uh and she decides to go with castle she'd also mentioned before this kind of like the whole procession for the wedding that she got ejected to she ejected to it and then Magnus put her held her in prison and says you're being too insolent at the moment I'll hold you until after the wedding that's right and then she broke free I think when Ray attacked yes oh, or broke right. free when D attacked she broke free at some point during the whole attack yeah anyway. so basically Magnus is dying and realises that he is like the son of Dracula and I think he says that for he says, Wait, you're you're his son. Yes. Um uh, and yeah, so he's like the the son of Dracula. And then yeah, he goes away and then he's riding his horse. Yep. I think. I and think then You've got Dan and Doris running at full pelt, like na 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 to the cliffside to go. D, we love you, Mr. D, Mr. D, Mr. D, we love you, bye. Yeah. And then he kind of goes, hmm, smile, and then that's the end. Yeah, that's it. Done. That's the end of it. That's a movie. It's a weird, weird movie. I mean, yeah. I don't hate it. I don't. I don't think it's bad. It's definitely very dated. I don't think it's aged particularly well. Um, I think Bloodlust has aged a lot better. I've not watched Bloodlust, so Bloodlust is it's really good, really, really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, very uh, definitely a, a far more contemporaneous uh, anim- um, art style for that time period as well. Like a higher budget. Uh-huh. Um, it's it's cool. It's real cool. Um, but yeah, I I like this movie. I still think it's a like a solid six, six and a half out of ten. It's pretty entertaining. Yeah. Um, oh, what do you it's think? I'm oh, certainly entertaining. Me. That's fun. Uh, it's probably a bit mid mid range. Yeah, I, I thought I thought no. below five was was not enough, and five. I definitely think it's even if it's just a little bit better than average. Yeah. Um, I think for the time, it's pretty mind-blowing. Like, I remember watching it. Um, it would have been around the time that Bloodlust even came out mm-hmm. and being like, oh, man, this is this is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Just sitting there, just having your seizure. Yeah, just, uh, like, having a seizure and being very confused um, because <laughs> there was a talking hand and <laughs> nothing was explained to me. Why um, have it? Yeah. I mean, because around this time, like my my previous like anime experience was, uh, you know, Ghost in the Shell, Akira, uh, yeah. movie wise anyway, and and then TV series wise, it was. Oh, I in fact also Fist of the North Star. So this is probably a closer approximation to Fist of the North Star. I think. I mean, yeah. I mean, to be honest, with all of those animes, we bar Ghost in the Shell. No, Ghost in the Shell is still the same. They didn't really. Exp- I think they allowed you to have read the source material, like the mangas well, or, that they were or based on. That it wasn't. I think the thing is, is like sometimes there's just look, like, hey, just go with it. I think uh-huh. is a, a thing that we weren't used to doing a lot, or I certainly wasn't. Yeah. I wanted to know everything about everything, and I think they made concessions for some of those things. Where it was just like, no, like it's not helping the story, so just let it do the thing, and we'll we'll get on with it. Because, yeah. like, I think Akira Akira has aged incredibly well, and so has Ghost in the Shell. Um, I think artistically this is really cool. It still looks really nice for its age. Um, yeah. But 
uh, yeah, I, it, it doesn't really hold up as interestingly anymore. Oh, Akira is kind of weird. Yep. It's like the story of that. It doesn't. It's, it's just events happening in my head. There's nothing real clear in the anime. I think. I think that's like the the whole thing of it is more. It's really just. It is a coalescence of events, but the underlying current of it is the deterioration of a friendship. Like that's <clears throat> to me, that's always what it's been about. It was like you know, uh, Tetsu and Canada and that sort of relationship, and just yeah. everything breaking down. Like oh. that's the the common thread. Tetsu. It wasn't really a. I think. I don't know. Tetsu essentially was going through some issues. Yeah. 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 Rather than a breakdown of friendship, he's just basically more. Um. I don't know. Just like. Reviews. He was becoming less and less human. Yeah. Well, he's coming less that, and that's, less. Uh, that, that's ones. what I mean. Yeah. It's like the whole the whole thing is like that that diver the whole thing is the I guess what I'm saying is is you're right the whole thing is just a series of events mm -hmm. but if you want the common thread that you can work through it's looking at their relationship through each of those events and seeing how it changes them. Yeah, I suppose that's one way to look at it. Here's what uh, I found. Oh, my watch has just shouted that it found some stuff and I don't know why. What was it found? Uh, apparently it's uh, it has recorded me saying common thread that you can work through it's looking at their relationship through each other through each other's events mm -hmm. here's what I found cool what's it found a bunch of web results that are <laughs> completely useless to me <laughs> um, <laughs> Not nothing about uh, Kira then no no nothing really <laughs> um, so yeah we've done it uh, we've gotten to the end of our uh, second spooky season episode yeah, of yeah. Vampire Hunter D. We will be back uh, with a new episode on the 30th of the month, our final spooky season episode, which will be Perfect Blue. Looking forward to watching that for the first time. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I haven't watched it yet. No. Um, and that is to say, uh, you know, Who's That Anime is an Anime Podcast. You can find where all good podcasts can be found. I won't even list them off anymore because you know where podcasts are, but we are at anchor.fm forward slash who's that anime. That's our home base. If you would like to leave us a review, that'd be super cool. Five stars, always welcome. Anything less with some constructive criticism, absolutely welcome as well. We don't make any money on this. There's no sort of like advertising or sponsorships or anything like that. We just kind of watch anime and talk about it. So we don't really have any way to market or do anything for the show. So if you wanted to tell a friend because you like what we do, um, that would be super cool. Uh, we also have a Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash here's that anime. There we post up about the new episodes and occasional anime memes. We have a Discord. You can look for that in the show notes. Um, we have a YouTube channel as well. Uh, if you go to youtube.com and search for who's that anime, um, you'll be able to find all of our video versions of these episodes. Colin, where are we at now? Uh, still Vampire in the Garden. Next week should oh, that's get, right. get the final Steinsgate episodes out. Sweet. Just got to work then, on them. then we'll be caught up and won't know what to do with ourselves. Well, I can't agree, yeah. Like two episodes <laughs> out. Jesus. Yeah. Scary to think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, we're, we're, we're getting up there. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, Colin and I like to play, occasionally play video games. Colin at twitch.tv forward slash couchfuel and myself at twitch.tv forward slash hailpayman. You can find the archives of all of those channels work if you go to the YouTube channels at youtube.com and search for the channels couchfuel or hailpayman. Yeah. And I think that's us. Yeah, that is. That's us. Next, next week is uh, Halloween. This is Halloween. I would like to see an anime of uh, Halloween. Like the Halloween movie? Yeah, like Mike Myers. Mike, Mike Myers. Myers. Oh, fool behave. Yeah, that's that's what he says before he stabs people. Oh, behave. <laughs> Sometimes he says groovy baby. 
groovy. <clears throat> Who it's throws a shoe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe that. I believe that. Well, we'll be back next week, as we said, to discuss uh, the amazingness, I'm assuming it's going to be amazing, of uh, Perfect Blue. Really looking forward to watching that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you want to send us out? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, this has obviously been Who's That Anime? Your podcast of anime things are not well informed. Uh, misinformed? I don't know. This is going good. And... I don't think we're as far as misinformed, but... We're definitely not well informed. <laughs> yeah. Never well informed. Um see catch us next week, uh, same any time, same any place. Uh see you next week for Perfect Blue. Ooh. Bye Letters. folks. Perfect Bye. blue. Perfect blue. <laughs> okay, now we're done. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Oh, dear. Uh, had to say that. That's what's going to end the call. That's what's going to end the Skype call. End the call, end the call. <laughs> so she's hired a bodyguard, has she? <laughs> exactly the sort of thing one would expect from a lowly human. <laughs> Where is the Count? I've been told a girl resides here whose beauty is unrivaled in this land, one whose blood is like the sweetest ambrosia. Or so my father says. Leastway, he sent me to fetch his newest plaything. But first, in so much as she's failed to deliver herself to his table, the lowly human must be punished. As for you, you shall die a horrible death, and then the girl will be dealt with at our leisure. I am Rei Ginsei, and my master commands me to slaughter all fools such as you. Now you die. better than I expected, but that ends now. I've been playing with you! about a mutant who can warp the fabric of time and space. Would that be you? <laughs> that it would. And now I shall take your head. <laughs> oh.